Disney, the company everyone simultaneously dislikes but puts up with anyway because they own like 50% of the things they enjoy. A lot of people love a lot of their animated movies, some people are really into some of the stuff they bought out like Marvel or Star Wars, and while I do enjoy some of those things, the main thing I've always found most interesting in the company's portfolio are their theme parks. I've made a few videos in the past about the subject, but honestly it can be hard trying to make that kind of content without actually being in the parks that much. I really enjoy them, but it's not like your average Joe can really go that often because but that got me thinking. My main bread and butter on this channel is video games. It was and always will be. And I mean, the parks have been around for a while now, so surely there may be some video games based on them. And I mean, games are much cheaper than theme park tickets. Just look. So today what I wanted to do was look through all or most of the video games that I could find that were actually based on the parks. And while there weren't a ton, there was a lot more than I thought. So let's not dilly-dally any longer and get right into our first game at Adventures in Magic Kingdom for the NES. So this game starts with a fairly simple story. Mickey is about to start a parade, but stupid idiot stupid Goofy loses the keys to the castle, meaning the parade can't begin. Then Mickey gets the brilliant idea of sending some random kitty found to go get all of the keys, despite the fact that he clearly knows where they are because he is who you go to to get hints and stuff. But moving on from that, we finally get to see the park, and wow, it's just like the real thing. All jokes aside, this is actually a pretty charming recreation of a Disney park. They obviously did the best they could with the hardware limitations, and honestly, I wasn't expecting an overworld like this at all, so it's pretty neat that it's here. From what I can tell, it's not based on a specific park like Disneyland or Magic Kingdom. I thought it was based on Magic Kingdom at first because the name is Adventures in Magic Kingdom and the cover art features the castle from that park, but then you can find Autopia in the game which isn't in Magic Kingdom since that park has the Tomorrowland Speedway and as I'm typing this script out I realize that nobody probably cares about this so we should just move on. So you have a total of six keys to find in this game and the first one that I went for was the one where you just have to walk around the park and answer really obscure Disney trivia until somebody finally gives you the key. It's a really good thing that you can just do these questions over and over again because otherwise I would have stuck because I thought this guy's name was Panchito. So after getting the first key, I decided to make my way to Space Mountain since that's one of my favorite rides. After entering, Mickey tells me that I'll be flying a spaceship and that he will be navigating and giving me directions. But what he actually means by this is that he will tell me exactly what button to press and I'll have like 0.1 seconds to do it, and if I fail, we will crash and die in space. I don't remember the ride being this stressful. In all reality, this isn't that hard, I mean it will probably take you a few tries just because of how fast it wants you to be, but other than that, it's just pressing buttons when it tells you to. Next I went to Autopia, and I gotta say, this is much more exciting than the real thing. Last time I rode this, I went like one mile an hour and then the car broke down. In this game, you're knocking other people off the track, doing jumps over water. They should make it like this in real life. Big Thunder Mountain is literally just a guessing game. Like you have to pick a path and then hope a boulder doesn't fall on your head or something. It's honestly not really that fun and almost completely luck based. The final two attractions that are in this game are Pirates and Haunted Mansion. I'm lumping them together since they both have the same gameplay style. They both play like your average NES platform Former, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. The movement feels fine enough, but man, these levels are really unfair. Pirates isn't too bad since most of the enemies are placed in areas that you can avoid since you don't get a weapon till much later on, but in Mansion, you are just constantly being hounded. There is always some ghost chasing you or a book flying at you, it's just a lot to take in. But after finally getting all of the keys, Mickey says thanks and the game ends. Wait, 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 wait. I don't get to see the parade? That's what this whole game was for. I literally saved hostages in the park and I don't get to see the parade? Mickey Mouse, you're a fraud and a liar and we are moving on to the next game. The next game we have is Mickey no Tokyo Disneyland Daibuken for the Super Famicom. This one was a Japanese exclusive if you couldn't tell. So unlike the last game which had some platforming segments, this game is instead a full-on platformer all the way through. You play as Mickey Mouse who's adventuring through Tokyo Disneyland for a reason that I'm not quite sure of because all of the dialogue was in Japanese. Upon starting the game you have access to your typical platforming controls of walking around and jumping, but we also have a new mechanic in the form of these balloons that you can inflate. We have air balloons that will allow you to hit enemies above you or get a little time in the air, and then we have the water balloons which allow you to hit enemies right 
in front of you, as well as place them down for weighing pressure plates or crossing windy gaps. The whole balloon idea is actually really cool and does a pretty good job of setting this game apart from other platformers of the time. The only problem with it though is that since it is your only way of dealing with enemies, the fact that you always have to charge it up at least a little bit can be very annoying. It's hard to react to an enemy popping out at you when you have to fill a water balloon to attack him. All of the different levels are themed around different areas of the park, which allows for some decent variety. You got your old western area with Big Thunder, your spooky ghost level with Haunted Mansion, and a more futuristic level with Space Mountain. I will say that these levels can feel kind of generic at times and don't always capture the feel of the rides all that great. Just like with the last game though, I can kind of excuse it because I'm sure there wasn't a whole lot they were able to do with the hardware, but I do think that they could have added a little more variety as these levels go on for a long time and never really change up that much. Another thing to note about this game is that it is very difficult. There are constant enemies popping up where you don't expect them, some pretty difficult maneuvers the game wants you to pull off, and some parts where I had no clue what to do because the game wanted me to do things that I didn't know I could do. The level I felt was the most fun was Splash Mountain because it had the least amount of bullcrap I had to deal with. It even has the part where you go down the waterfall. Uh, come on, that's just fun. This game does have some fun stuff, but overall, I was just kind of getting frustrated more than I was having fun during my playthrough. For every fun new idea, there were two enemies hiding in a chest that I didn't have time to prepare for. While the last two games are fun in concept, I just don't think they were executed all that well. Neither of these games really give that feeling that the parks do. Like, yeah, this is a Haunted Mansion level, but it just feels more like a generic ghost level in a Mario game. But I think our next game has a much better chance of being able to replicate what makes the park special. The game is called Walt Disney World Quest Magical Racing Tour, and I'm playing the version that was available on PS1. Now, immediately, this game has a huge advantage over the last two as it has access to fully 3D environments. It's really hard to replicate the detail of these parks in small 2D environments, so hypothetically, this game should be able to recreate some of these rides or parks way more accurately. So this game starts with a little flyover of the Magic Kingdom and then the most terrifying creature I've ever seen. Oh, I wanna look at that, ew! Why does his mouth move like that? It's creepy! Then when you finally get to the character select screen, who is this? Yeah, so weirdly enough, the only characters in this game that are actually recognizable at all are Chip and Dale. Most of these other guys, I think, are original to this game because I looked up Mo Whiplash and this is all that came up. I think it's cool that this game has some of its own original characters and all, but would it have really been such a bad thing to put like Mickey Mouse in here? This is a Disney racing game and we don't have Donald Duck, but we have his grandpa who got addicted to meth. Once we finally get to the course selection screen, this is all of Disney World. Unlike the last two games where it was mainly focused on one park, this game instead features every park in Disney World, including the water parks. Now, some parks only have one course and a majority of the tracks are in Magic Kingdom, but it's still really cool that they tried to include more than just the basic stuff that's been in the other games. And then once you actually start a race, man, these tracks are really cool. You know how I was talking earlier about how the other games didn't really capture the feeling of the parks? Well, this game does and does it well. All of the tracks are meant to be as faithful as they can to the park or ride they are based on. A lot of the tracks use actual music from the parks, and then the car you are driving is based on the ride vehicle of the attraction that you are currently in. Some of my favorite tracks in the game have to be Space Mountain, Rock and Roller Coaster, Blizzard Beach, and Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean has to be the best one in the game. It's just so detailed and it's all so accurate to the actual ride, which is super impressive, especially for a PS1 game. Blizzard Beach is really cool since it is one track based on an entire water park, but I can't help but notice that the music just doesn't really sound like anything from Disney World. It's pretty good, but I don't know, there's just something weird about it. If you guys ever played Gex 3, there's just like a real life human woman in that game and I don't know why. On top of having the normal racing courses, we also have these mini collect-a-thon levels where you just have to explore and find these coins. There's one based on Test Track, Typhoon Lagoon, and Disney Studios, which would have been called Disney MGM Studios back when this game came out, but I guess they didn't want to have to pay MGM. Typhoon Lagoon is probably the best out of all of these because it's based on a really nice looking park and there's some fun hiding spots for the collectibles. It also has this guy. Okay, I've gone this whole time without talking about how the game actually plays. I should probably do that. 
So you know Mario Kart? Yeah, so this game is pretty much just a Mario Kart clone and there's really not much else to say about it. Drifting is the only thing I had trouble getting used to since it causes you to make really tight turns and mainly just causes me to crash into walls. But once I got used to it and learned when it was actually beneficial to use it, it wasn't that bad. The item selection is also mostly copied from Mario Kart, except we have items that can turn you into a frog and one that puts you in a spitting teacup. Both of these are very annoying, but at least the teacup one is an actual reference the parks. This game's main problem is probably just its frame rate because man it is not good. Overall I think this game is pretty solid and I actually had fun playing it despite some of its problems so if you like mediocre racing games on the PS1 today's your lucky day. Next up we have Haunted Mansion on the GameCube and oh this game is boring. A game about the Haunted Mansion isn't inherently a bad idea but this was probably one of the most uninteresting ways they could have done it. What makes the Haunted Mansion fun is the charming set pieces and just the fact that everything you're seeing is something real that took a lot of effort and work to make. While I'm sure this game took a lot of effort and work to make, it doesn't have any of the charm or fun set pieces. This game doesn't really feel like a Haunted Mansion game but rather a cheap Luigi's Mansion knockoff. I didn't play the whole game because I think I would have been miserable doing that, but from what I played there was like one character that I recognized from the actual ride. Almost everything in this game is original stuff, but calling it original doesn't feel quite right either because it's just generic ghosts and spiders the whole game. But even then, the game doesn't look bad or anything, I actually think it looks pretty good for a GameCube game. But the main problems lie in the gameplay because man it is really repetitive. This game basically operates in a cycle. You go in a room, shoot ghosts with your lantern, solve a puzzle, then suck tiny ghosts into your lantern. Dealing with the normal enemies of the game is quite literally just spamming the shoot button because you don't have to aim, you don't have to use any strategies for different types of enemies, it's just shooting which is like the lamest way of fighting ghosts. And then when you get to suck ghosts into your lantern they don't even fight back, they just go in. Most of the puzzles are interesting in concept but just not that fun in execution. Like this one where you're on a giant pool table and you have to try and get the balls in the holes. Sounds fun and all but it mainly just ends up being you sitting there while you're getting attacked by a bunch of ghosts. I really wish I could like this game more or at least have some more to say about it, but it's really just not all that interesting and doesn't even really feel like a game based on a Disney attraction. Like at all. While all of the games we have talked about, not you, have been at least decently fun, none of them have really tried to give the day at a Disney park experience since Adventures in Magic Kingdom, and that game didn't really have the resources to fully deliver on that concept. But what if we got a game that finally revisited that idea with the advantage of more modern technology? And that's where Disneyland Adventures comes in. This game was originally released in 2011 on the Kinect, but due to the fact that I don't own a Kinect and I also don't want to deal with one, I just got the re-release on Steam that supports normal people controllers. So in this game, you play as a child who has somehow ended up in Disneyland by himself with no family or friends. Your job is basically to wander around the park and do whatever you want. You see, to try and replicate the park experience a little bit, the game doesn't give you any large overarching goals or anything and rather just lets you go around and explore the park and ride any rides you may want to experience. The main notable thing here is just how accurate this game is to actual Disneyland, at least in its layout. If you have ever been to this park before, then you will immediately know where everything is and how to get to places. And honestly, if you're planning on going and want to know what it's like to navigate the park, this wouldn't be the worst way to learn the layout. The game also does a really good job of giving some ambient noise to make it sound like you're actually there. They play the appropriate music in the different lands, you can hear people talking as you walk by, and just so much more. You can tell the people that made this really wanted to make you feel like you're in the park and they did a really good job. As far as content in this part of the game goes, you can mainly just talk to different characters and do side quests for them. Like I got some pictures for Mickey, I got Donald his hat back, and I stole people's lunches for Stitch. But what I have not mentioned so far are the rides, which realistically you would spend the most time on during your actual day in the park. So how did they handle those? Just like I said earlier, this game is kind of like a more modern version of what Adventures in Magic Kingdom was trying to do. So just like that game, all of the attractions are actually mini games that you can play. Before we really get into it though, I do want to say that it's actually really impressive that they got most of the rides in the park represented here. There are a few missing here and there, and some others that they may have not had the licensing to when they made the game, but other than a few exceptions, all of the rides you would expect are here. Now, for the actual rides themselves, 
eh. This is where it becomes really easy to tell that this was a connect game because all of these mini games require very little input with you usually just needing to steer and occasionally aim. These mini games can be really boring, but they also stretch out for a really long time. They are all divided into chapters and some of them are like five chapters long and a lot of the chapters are like five to 10 minutes of you just doing the same thing over and over again. I found that the most fun mini games were usually just the ones where you're going down some slope or river and need to avoid obstacles. All of the other mini games were usually either way too slow or way too easy to try to make up for the fact that this game was originally controlled with a fancy camera. These mini games were honestly just kind of disappointing to me because most of them just weren't that fun and went on for way too long. Honestly, I feel like the racetracks in Magical Racing Tour did a better job of encapsulating the feel of the rides it was trying to replicate. And that gave me an idea. What if they made a sort of spiritual successor to Magical Racing Tour with all of the tracks being based on newer and older Disney attractions, but the hub world to get to the races is just a recreation of one or more of the parks like in Disneyland Adventures. This way you could have the park experience that you get from Disneyland Adventures while also just having a fun game. I doubt anything like this would ever happen since Disney already has a gross live service cart racer that they're doing right now, but hey, Walt Disney Company, if you're listening, which I'm sure you are, I'll take $5 million in cash, trust me it'll work. So the final game that I played for this video is Magic Kingdoms, which isn't like the rest of the games we have talked about today because this one is a mobile game. So in concept, I like the idea of this game. It's all about making your own Disney park and building attractions and all that kind of stuff, which is a really fun idea. You can even get characters to walk around the park as well as parades and all sorts of stuff that in theory makes this game pretty cool. Then you remember it's a mobile game. Since this is a free to play mobile game, that obviously means that this game is trying to get as much money as it possibly can from you. I will compliment it and say that I wasn't getting overwhelmed with ads, in fact I don't think there were any, but almost every single thing that you do is going to start some sort of countdown which could last 60 seconds or 60 minutes, and knowing these types of games I'm sure once you get far enough it could take days. This is obviously because the game wants you to buy its premium currency so that you can skip these wait times and access more content. This might actually be the most accurate Disney Park game. Yeah, this isn't really a game you should waste your time with. It just wants your time and money without offering an experience that's really all that fun. So those were all the games that I played for this video. But we're not quite done yet because there are a few others that I didn't mention or couldn't play that I still want to talk about. First, I'm going to mention the Epic Mickey game since those games take a lot of inspiration from the parks. Pretty much all of the levels in both of the games are based on some Disney park land or attraction and it's really cool. I made a whole video on this series a little while back so if you want to hear me go a little more in depth then you should check that out. I'll probably do another video as well when the remake comes out so stay tuned for that. We also have the Walt Disney World Explorer which was available for Windows computers in the late 90s. This is less of a game from what I can tell and more of just a really in-depth advertisement for Disney World. I don't know how else to describe it so here's a clip to maybe give you a better idea. Guests feel hot breath and something wet on their necks. Virtual Magic Kingdom looks to be like a Club Penguin type game, which means I probably would have been hooked if I played it as a kid. I don't really know much about this game and there are probably a bunch of videos that explain it much better, so if you're curious I would just go watch one of those. The final game we have is Toy Story Mania. This isn't a recreation of the ride or a reimagining of the ride. This is just a straight up port of the ride to consoles and PC. This makes sense because it's really not the most complicated ride and it's pretty much all screens. For those reasons, I don't really care for the ride that much, so I'm not that interested in the video game version of it either, and it's like $20 on Steam, so no thanks. Also, one more thing before we finish up, I would have covered the Pirates of the Caribbean games, but there are just a lot of them and they're all based on the movies, so I just didn't really feel like those fit the video. So those were all of the Disney Park games that I could find. And I gotta say, while most of them weren't any more than just okay, that's honestly more than I was expecting. Magical Racing Tour and Disneyland Adventures definitely stuck out to me the most because Racing Tour is genuinely just a pretty solid game, and Disneyland Adventures, despite having a lot of problems, definitely nailed the park atmosphere. Now that we're all done with the Disney Park games, I am kind of curious if their competitors ever did anything with video games. <laughs> Welcome to Universal Studios! Never mind, I was just joking. Time to go now, bye! <laughs>